this pickup here, the valves have been getting noisy enough to where I uh, hear them over the engine and over the normal engine noise. Anyway, valves are getting, and it's probably not so detrimental to the engine. These, uh, the Cummins can take a lot, a lot of extra play in them before it does real damage. But uh, it, it starts wearing on my nerves after a while because I feel bad for the poor little engine. Point being, when you go to adjust valves, there are definitely different ways that people have in mind. I looked on the internet a little bit. One of the ways, and it works, uh, one of the ways that it's done, and I didn't bring in a lifter, but we can always imagine this as a lifter. It doesn't really matter. The, the reality is, when you adjust for your lash, your clearance, you want to be on the base circle. And as you can see here, if you just look at this even, it's a little hard to see where the base circle starts and stops. So what you want to do is get to where you know, there's a whole bunch, there's a half of it around here that you know it's the base circle. But one of the ways that this is done is just by happenstance. And that's a really good way, if you don't want to get fancy at all, is you turn your engine over, and when it's turned over, you pick any place where the lifters are loose, and that's where you adjust it. So these ones here would be tight, and you wouldn't adjust them. So next time around, you'd turn the engine a little bit more, you'd adjust the ones that are loose, any of them that are loose. The good part on that is that it's easy. The bad part on it is, Let's say that I'm right here. This one's not really tight, but it's got a little bit of play. So now it's loose and I adjust it. And I think that I've adjusted it, but I actually have got it. It was just barely up on the cam. So it was where it, it still needed a little bit more loosening. It was actually still tight. Now, if I catch it next time around, it will be loose and I can adjust it. So using the happenstance method, as long as you're sure that you check every lifter every time will work great. You don't have to have it at a particular place and adjust it because if this one was wrong, even just a little bit, then the next time over here, I can adjust it right. Where you get into trouble with that though is you're adjusting these really close. <clears throat> Say we have 20 thousandths clearance. And because we were up just a little bit on this one as we adjusted it to 20 thousandths, we roll over here and now it's 25 thousandths. Well, when you're looking to see if it's somewhere near loose, you're seeing this one is loose and another one over here you haven't touched at all is like an eighth of an inch loose. So we started with all of them backed way off. This one you adjust but you might miss readjusting this one if you don't actually check all of the loose ones with a feeler gauge if they are mechanical lifters. Because this one at 25 would not feel too much different than another one you had adjusted that was actually at 20. So that's the one thing that's a little bit off with the happenstance. Now, if we're adjusting for hydraulic lifters, that's not a real problem because most hydraulic lifters have a lot of travel. They'll have 50 thousandths to over 100 thousandths of movement. With that much movement, all you're trying to do is get them to the zero lash position. You're not really setting a amount of thousandths to start with. Then you're coming down normally a setting from the engine manufacturer of how much of a turn on the adjusting screw. Uh, but what you really want to do in general is you want to end up in the middle of the travel for your hydraulic lifter. So that the hydraulic lifter can do the most possible as far as compensating, whether it's extending or retracting. Um, that also is in a matter of normal, uh, normal functioning. Um, if you are looking for an engine and you know you're not going to touch it for a long, long time, if you tighten them down a little bit further, the hydraulic lifter can push it up further. If you have an engine, as it wears, it has more, fun, more ability to make up for wear in the system. If you have a hydraulic lifter that is collapsed all the time, it doesn't want to pump up, adjust it all the way down. 
uh, adjust it to, to where it's almost like a mechanical lifter. Just imagine that it's solid. And it's not the way that it's suggested to do, but you can adjust it down further to make up for the fact that it does not lift up. It does not pump up. If you're trying for high RPM, uh, racing, extreme, you want to make sure it doesn't pump up and float your valve so easy, get to the upper end of the lifter travel when you adjust it. But those are all cheats. Um, and if you're really going into racing and stuff, there's a whole bunch of things they do on that as far as where, what works best with a given cam. Um, why do you even need clearance? You want some clearance in here to make sure that the valve is seated. You want to make sure that the valve can come down. This is a valve, not from this engine. This is out of a 59 Alpine. Uh, this one here is from a 96 Cummins. This is an intake valve. You want to get the valve so that it closes all the way. And since everything expands as it heats up, your whole valve train, if things are rigid, then you need to leave a little bit of clearance to make sure that the spring can close this. If, uh, because what will happen in here, it, let's say we had it adjusted perfect to start with where it closes and there's just no, no extra clearance in here other than maybe a thousandth of an inch for the oil film. And so this is, everything's working perfect. But now as the engine heats up, the cylinders grow or the push rods on some of them. If you have aluminum push rods, they might actually grow more than the engine does. So it'll go one way or the other, making more clearance or less clearance. And that's why on a mechanical system, we leave some extra clearance in there so that we definitely know we've got clearance. If you have too much clearance, what'll happen is you come in here and it'll be way up here. And then all of a sudden the cam will hit it or as it comes down, it'll hit here and it'll pound on your cam if there's excess clearance. And that's what I'm worried about right now on, even though they're pretty forgiving, that's, that's what's bothering me, the noise I'm hearing on my engine and my pickup. Um, if you don't have enough clearance, you don't have any clearance, let's say that the valve is not going down all the way. If it's an exhaust valve and it's not going down all the way, that's the one that normally gets hurt the most and that's because of heat. The exhaust valve, you got all this flame coming by the exhaust valve as everything's rushing out. It's heating up this head and the head expands even a little bit. <clears throat> and then what happens when it seats, there's some of your cooling goes down through the stem, but you've only got so much stem here to cool a whole bunch of head. The major cooling happens when it sets on the seat while that valve is closed the seat radiates the heat into the seat, then into the block and into the water or air if it was an air-cooled engine. But that being closed allows that cooling. But there's more to it than that. Let's go to the point of talking about the, an intake valve, okay? Intake valve doesn't quite close all the way. Well, when the pressure piston starts coming up on compression, that pressure in this valve will close this. It will compress your valve system and it will close this. But while it closes this, it's gonna be doing it by deforming the valve just a little bit at the edges. All the, the center is gonna stay rigid or maybe overloading a push rod, overloading a rocker, somewhere there's gonna be overloading. But even if this is absolutely rigid, you're gonna overload your valve a little bit by making it seal. And the engine will run actually with, with like a thousandths inch of gap left here or two thousandths, just minor. And if it gets to that point, but it will be deforming the valve until the point that the valve fails earlier. Um, not normally a problem and especially not with the uh, hydraulic lifters, but it's something that happens. Okay, so now if we wanna start adjusting our valves according to position, well, one of them is uh, kind of like the happenstance, but it's added to the point that you give it every quarter turn, which would be uh, it's a quarter turn of your engine. So that would be an eighth of a turn of your cam. Uh, another one that, that is talked about a lot is your exhaust opening. So as you're, you're turning 
clockwise here, this one was cam driven, this would have to be the exhaust. And why does this have to be the exhaust? You know that your valve lobes, you have an exhaust and an intake, and in between them is the overlap, so where they are the closest together. And the overlap is where this valve is open a little bit here, and this one is open a little bit. That overlap is where they are together. So you know as this turns clockwise, the exhaust valve is going to come up here first. So as our exhaust valve comes up, they say exhaust opening. So they, when the exhaust valve starts to open, then you come over here and you can see that there's lots of room on the intake where you can adjust it. You're, it's a long ways around there. Then the next event that you look for is when the intake is closed most of the way. So you're not looking for, this time you were looking for when the exhaust just starts to open, just moves a little bit, and you can see that that's a very, very good place for adjusting your intake. The next one is the intake, not when the intake is opening, while well, that will work too, but their ideal that they're looking for is when the exhaust, I mean the intake is closing, when it's coming down on its closing, and they call that uh, E exhaust, E-O, in E-O-I-C, and you'll see a lot of that. That's, I, you know, okay. You can also go to your book for the engine, which this is the method I like the least. You go to your book for your engine, the engine book, and it says, turn your engine to such and such a place, and then it says, adjust this one, this one, this one, Maybe this one, depending on the book, ooh, look, that one's actually not quite right. Well, that would happen because we adjusted according to the book, but we don't have a factory cam in there. You know, if you have a hot rod cam, now this one that was supposed to be correct might not be correct because we have more duration. The cam is going further. So that's one of the reasons I don't like that. Also, it's just a whole bunch of reading book and trying to do this or remember things. And I'm not a fan of that. Um, my method that I do and what I normally instruct people with is we come over here and we look for something a little bit different. We come to our exhaust, we watch the exhaust open, we watch the exhaust close, and then when we get to where the intake just starts to open, now we know we're at overlap. And what is so good about overlap? It's not the fact that uh, for this cylinder being at overlap, but we go to the cylinder that's 180 degrees off. Now I can adjust both the intake and exhaust. So that makes my life real easy because I get to adjust both of them. Then my next cylinder in the firing order to come up would be this one. I'd come to overlap again where your exhaust is, um, your exhaust is closing and your intake just starts to open and then I would go to this cylinder. And that, that is actually my favorite way as to figure out the order. And uh, normally I use coveralls for that, but today we'll just use our blue jeans or the rag that I should have had here. So what you do when you're doing that procedure is we write down our, our timing, uh, our firing order. Okay, so you write down the firing order and then next to the firing order, you step it up for the ones that are 180 degrees off. So one, the 180 degrees off from it would be six. You would have one, two, the third event. So over here, we would put six at the top. Then we put two underneath it, put four underneath that. Then we put one. Uh, and then we go to uh, five and three. And you can use this chart, you can use either side you want. Either look for overlap here and adjust number one if you want to go down the firing order, or you could look for overlap at number one and go to six. But either way, carrying these in order as you go down the list allows you to run through the, the uh, cylinders. Everything is always turning clockwise. I prefer to turn engines when I'm working with them clockwise, even though yes, they'll live several revolutions going backwards. I just prefer to not be pumping the oil out of the oil pump. 
and uh, <clears throat> if you have overlap on one, you adjust the valves on six. Overlap on five, you adjust the valves on two. And we can actually do the same thing back here. While I was in a hurry to find a firing order, we can have the firing order on this one too. It's real easy. A lot of this stuff, you can, if you stop and think about it, you can figure it out without having to have the manuals. Um, a lot of old engines that I've resurrected for projects, uh, no manuals. You could turn this around. Number one cylinder would be here in front. So we have an event happening on number one. So where does our event happen on the next cylinder? Um, that one there is going to be an intake because it's the second one. So it's not that one. It's going to be right here. So it would be the third cylinder. So this engine would have fired one, three. And then we'd come to four and then we would have came to two. So that would be the firing order for the engine that this cam would have been in. <clears throat> and then from that, it's easier to do it with looking at the valves. Same thing. Just pick the same valve on every one. It, it wouldn't really matter if it was an intake or an exhaust. It's a little more here looking at the cam because I had to figure out which one is exhaust each time too. Um, and just see which one moves as you turn it forward. When something happens at one, where's it happen to next? That gives you the firing order of the engine, whether it's written down or not. So again, for this one, our event would be halfway through. So we go to three and to four. So we go four, two, one, and three for our alternate column. So when we had overlap here, we'd be adjusting the other ones. And we will have video of Austin adjusting the valves. So he can show you some of that. That's specifically on the Cummins this time. <clears throat>